This video explains how I constructed a stand and canopy for a 150 gallon aquarium. I bought this aquarium for my common snapping turtle, which is a female, weighing in at 17 pounds and has a shell length of 11 inches. I raised her from a hatchling nearly 6 years ago. Snapping turtles are not an outwardly aggressive animal unless threatened, and for that I believe that they are somewhat misunderstood. While also being relatively intelligent, they can recognize their owner and beg for food. One time when I came home from a week on vacation, she was literally trying to climb out of the tank towards me, and I believe this was out of excitement. In my opinion, snapping turtles make great pets. However, I would not suggest that the average person attempt to keep one. They require an extremely large setup and are a big commitment overall. By the time this turtle is full size, it will most likely be housed in a 500 gallon aquarium. In the meantime, she will be housed in this 150 gallon aquarium. I am by no means a carpenter, and I used all hand tools other than a power drill to construct this stand and canopy. That being said, there are definitely some issues that wouldn't have occurred had I used power tools. Either way, with a little hard work and time, I feel that anyone could construct such a stand other than the artistic touches. I began this project by cutting down 2x4s to 24 separate boards of 5 different lengths. First are the A boards, which are 36 and a half inches in length. Second are the B boards, which are 33 and a half inches in length. Third are the C boards, which are 24 inches in length. Fourth are the D boards, which are 22 and a half inches in length. Finally are the E boards, which are 17 inches in length. Next I constructed the frame of the stand based on the DIY King stand and canopy videos. See the description for a link to these videos. I changed his design slightly by adding a middle brace. I did this so that I could easily attach door panels. Dotted lines indicate that you cannot see the board in this picture. As you can see the A and B boards combine to make the top and bottom of the stand. The C and D boards then act like posts to hold the top and bottom of the stand in place. Finally, the E boards must be hit into place using a rubber mallet in order to add significant structural integrity to the stand. Essentially the 10 E boards absorb all of the weight exerted by the aquarium. This feature is what makes the design so effective. Here's a different angle of the frame so that you can get a better idea of how it is constructed. After constructing the stand's frame, I cut two pieces of corner molding in order to adequately hide the edges of the frame. I then cut pieces of quarter inch ply board to specific dimensions based on the frame. I attached the boards to all sides of the frame except for the bottom using one inch panel board nails. After doing so, I attached molding to the top and bottom of the stand on all sides but the back. On the top, I had the molding stick up two inches to somewhat hide the tank supporting frame. Then I put three coats of gray and ebony stain on to give a character. After staining, I applied two coats of polyurethane to keep the stand protected. Next it was time to construct the doors of the stand. I used pieces of molding cut at 45 degree angles to construct picture frames so to speak. I attached the pieces together using metal L braces on the back. After doing so, I applied three coats of ebony stain and one coat of polyurethane to the frames. I wanted to give the stand a unique look and therefore decided to paint the panels that go inside of the door frames. In order to reflect the natural environment of the snapping turtle, I chose to paint a marshy swamp landscape. Here's a time lapse of the painting.
After completing the painting, I attached it to the door frame and applied another coat of polyurethane to the entire door. I then attached the doors to the stand using two hinges on each side. I also added two cabinet clasps to each in order to keep the door shut unless pulled open. Finally, I attached a wooden handle to each door which I stained and polyed beforehand. After drilling four one and a half inch holes in the back of the stand for filtration, the stand was then complete. The next step of this project was to construct the canopy. The design is essentially the same as the stand, but it uses 2x2s instead of 2x4s. I cut the 2x2s down to 17 boards of 4 different lengths. First are the A boards, which are 36 inches in length. Second are the B boards, which are 33 inches in length. Third are the C boards, which are 11 inches in length. And finally are the D boards, which are 8 inches in length. After constructing the canopy's frame, I cut two pieces of corner molding in order to adequately hide the edges of the frame. I then cut pieces of quarter inch ply board to specific sizes based on the dimensions of the frame. I attached the ply board to this frame using the same nails as beforehand. I put boards on all sides of the frame except for the bottom and the back. Next I attached molding to the top and bottom of the canopy on all sides except for the back. I had the molding stick up 2 inches on both to somewhat hide the tank supporting frame and to make the canopy look taller than it actually is. Then I applied 3 coats of grey and ebony stain to match the stand. After staining I applied 2 coats of polyurethane to keep the canopy protected. Then I drilled 2 1.5 inch holes in the top to attach light fixtures. Next it was time to construct the doors of the canopy, which are identical to the ones on the stand other than their dimensions. I applied 3 coats of ebony stain and 2 coats of polyurethane to the frames. Originally I wanted to paint the door panels to match the stand, but then I came up with the idea of stained glass. I thought this would be cool since the lights in the canopy could illuminate the panels adequately. Here's a time lapse of the stained glass. As you can see, I drew a sketch of what I wanted on the panels. Next, I cut two pieces of plexiglass to specific dimensions based on the door panels. Then I used a 20 gallon aquarium, like a light box, so that I could see the paper through the plexiglass. I used black acrylic paint to transfer the line work to the plexiglass. Next, I removed the paper and painted the desired colors using a mixture of Elmer's glue and acrylic paint. After that, I flipped the plexiglass over and painted the line work onto the opposite side, which is actually the front. This completed the artwork. After drilling 12 564 inch holes into the stained glass, they could then be attached to the inside of the canopy doors. Essentially, adding the doors to the canopy completed the construction of this project. Then it was time to get the 150 gallon aquarium in place. I added play sand and large rocks to the bottom of the tank, along with a few pieces of driftwood for accents. Play sand is way cheaper than aquarium sand, and personally, I like the color as well. Generally, it runs about $3 per bag as opposed to $20 and up. The only thing is that it needs to be washed very thoroughly, and I mean thoroughly. It comes with a lot of dirt and other stuff on it. You can use it for fish as well, I've had great success with it in the past. I used an API XPL for the filtration, which is adequate for now, although I have another filter which is too large for under the stand, so I'll get another API XPL in the near future. Here's what the stand and canopy looks like, totally finished and up and running. All in all, I'm very pleased with the results of this project. The only issue that really bothers me is that the doors are not entirely square. Otherwise, everything looks very similar to my vision. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, subscribe to me and see them as soon as they are uploaded. In the near future, I will show you how to build a large snake cage for pretty cheap, a live planted naturalistic 90 gallon setup for my bullfrog, and some cool vivarium videos. I create art and designs as well, so you can never be sure what's next. I have uploaded all of my content to my website, go to serpadesign.com to see my whole portfolio, and also follow me on Flickr, friend me on Facebook, and Google+. Thank you for watching.